I will introduce the idea of confirmatory factor analysis and will discuss um, how this method can quantify um, social constructs. An example of a social construct um, is um, financial inclusion. Yeah, financial inclusion means I try to um, quantify access to formal financial services. The issue is um, it's not easy to do that. There is nothing like a natural way of measuring it. In, in the description below um, and in my GitHub, um, I refer to a paper um, I published um, some time ago on, um, on this particular problem. Now a social construct is, um, is something which we can't easily quantify. Um, often you might also read the term um, latent viable. Yeah, so latent or unobserved um, viable, which we can't easily get our hands on. Yes, yeah, so if you think about measurement, um, so most variables we, we used before, like, um, like interest rates, like GDP growth rates, you know, you, you know how to measure it. And I think there is a, a, a good um, level of evidence that there are certain ways of measuring these things. Um, and there is not as much debate around it. Yeah? However, in, in, in other cases, that is not, uh, not really true. Yeah? So an ex example, for instance, here, which is very common also in, in, in the literature, is, um, for instance, confidence or overconfidence. So there is a whole literature in, in management that argues that overconfident decision makers, you know, CEOs, make uh, poor decisions. The issue is um, how do we measure overconfidence? Yeah? So it's not obvious. The next thing you have to always think actually about is what can you actually measure? And very often the answer is um, you might um, already have certain um, factors that you can observe. Um, so a classic thing is you have a questionnaire um, and you ask questions to participants and they respond to maybe 10, 20 questions. You could also have some characteristics which you can observe, yeah, like age, or you have to ask someone about age, about income, for instance, so things you can actually quantify. In the context of financial inclusion, what we tend to use is um, um, you know, the number of um, ATM machines for 1,000 inhabitants or the number of bank branches. So the main challenge is how can we move from these factors we can observe to the social construct like um, overconfidence. You will find now in the literature one solution and this um, it goes under index construction. The human development index is used a lot in, in development economics. It combines a GDP per capita measure, life expectancy um, and um, primary school enrollment rates. So it kind of combines health, education and economic development into one index. The issue of index construction um, is always how do you determine which factor goes in. Number one. Number two, um, and that's actually very tricky, what is the weight? So um, is it equally weighted, the index? Um, and very often it is. But the issue is there is no reason why it should be equally weighted. How many indices do you need? So um, very often people just use one index and say, oh, that's a way of measuring stuff. But um, there is no reason for it because you might argue, why not have two? So this whole literature um, needs um, a discussion about what you call reducing dimensions. Yeah, and this is also an area in machine learning. So for instance, if I have um, 20 factors, so if you have 20 factors, you actually operate um, in a space that has 20 dimensions. The idea um, of an index is you um, could map this information into a lower dimensional space. But it's very doubtful that one single dimension is sufficient to capture all this information. So how can you move from this to uh, maybe an R um, power of 
k, where k is much, much smaller than 20, without losing too much information. Principal component analysis. The idea behind principal component analysis is um, you have a linear combination of these factors that give me an index or a principal component. Yeah, so in this case, you might be able to write an index y as a1 um, x1, where x1 is your first factor, then you have a second factor here. And um, the principal component analysis will help me to justify these weights here. Yeah, so these weights will be justified. Um, and um, of course, you will see, depending on the weights, certain factors might not be very important. You might even then argue, well, maybe I just ignore a few factors because actually they don't really matter. Now, this principal component analysis um, um, helps you also to argue how many of these indices can you get. In many real applications, you end up um, with maybe somewhere around three to four. But this already helps you to reduce the dimensions quite significantly. So the other way um, is um, what you call um, um, factor analysis, and there's a special sub type um, and this is CFA, so that's confirmatory fact analysis. The main difference um, is in terms of how the dimensions are reduced. The confirmatory fact analysis um, has um, at its core a so-called measurement model. A measurement model um, is related to um, this whole area of structural equation modeling. I have here my social construct. Again, I denoted y. Um, and I don't know actually how to measure it. Yeah? So I put this into an oval shape. So and um, then we have these factors um, in rectangular boxes, which means I can actually measure them. And now the idea of um, the measurement model is that my latent variable can influence these different answers to a question or the different factors I can measure. So the direction of influence goes from your latent variable to these factors. So put differently, these latent variables, they um, contribute to the outcome, to the answers you might give in a, in a questionnaire. Then the other component is each and every factor has its own error term. So there's a so-called idiosyncratic error term, which also affects your response. So that's a different perspective. Yeah? So you have a kind of a common latent variable y, which influences all these different factors. And then you have an idiosyncratic error component. And what we try to then quantify is um, here the so-called um, factor loadings. The other thing which you can permit in these measurement models is you can permit that these error terms are um, correlated, so they don't have to be independent. Now, confirmatory fact analysis as a starting point has a theory. So you have a theory or you might have a so-called definition of your measure. And um, then what you do is you implement this um, in, um, in your model and then you test to what extent is this actually a valid measure? Um, other people um, come more from um, from the data, or you do both. Yeah, you you go from theory, check the theory, um, and then um, see whether this is a good measure, and you might come up with improved measures um, from your data analysis. In the next video, I show you how we can do it um, in Starter.